So here comes the third video right now. It's 2.15 in the morning, West Coast time. It's still the 7th of November, 2023. The Weaver Johnson here, Rosemond, California. How you doing? Okay. Back to consumer math, what I was trying to talk about. The math that is important to me is the consumer math. I'm not thinking about math that drives planets or constellations or the universe itself, but I can appreciate the beauty of it all. No, I'm looking for the dollars and cents at this point over here. It's going to last me one day or the next day, the next day, and the next day. I'm trying to do the calculations. Now, I was trying to talk about consumer math. Uh, we deal with paychecks of different sorts. We deal with efforts earned, and then we got to get that money and partial it out somehow. Split it up. For those in the academia world, they probably struggle with this as well. And the students are trying to struggle to impress the professor of what they know about the higher math levels, which would please them. i probably piss them off even further if I happen to talk to a professor concerning about consumer math. You want, you want me to understand about math? This is the math I understand. Not about fractal situations. Nothing about infinite combinations or maybe it looks like it. I'm not looking at a tree. I'm looking at the aesthetic beauty. I'm looking at the... I'm looking at the chemical changes in the plants themselves. I'm looking how they change colors in the seasons. It's pretty. I'm looking into the sky and how the sky looks pretty, especially when you get cloud formations over there. And when you have this maybe fractal, maybe mathematics, but photographic, it's beautiful, especially when I get light rays coming through uh, clouds and I see streaks in the sky and I take pictures of them because they're so beautiful. Is it math? No, I don't care. If it is math, then it's a beautiful kind of math. I like it. But the grunge work of the math, what I have, find a penny, pick it up, put it in your collection because you're going to be saving it for, for later on down the road. That's the math I'm bogged down with all the damn time. My mother was an accountant controller when she was, when she was alive, and she had her own bookkeeping and tax business for about oh, 25, 30 years, roughly. So she had clients. She could do math in her head. Or sometimes on a calculator when it's needed. When it came down for calculating taxes and amortization, what kind of deductions we're talking about regarding property of all sorts, how the tax credits are going to be affected by, she'd be calculating. When it came down for payroll, when it came down for accounts receivable, accounts payable, she was knowledgeable of it. She had figured out how much income the, the company would be gaining, how much equity they already had, and how much of expenditures they've got going. And do the juggling on that one. Put it on spreadsheets. Put it in account numbers and account payables department and accounts receivables and everything else is adding up. Get figures from how much money we're coming in, depending upon how much money is coming out, how much equity we've already got regarding property value, how much starting capital we've already got, what's our short-term liabilities, what's the long-term liabilities, what's our short-term payables coming in, a little piece at a time, or what's the long-term investment, such as investment into, say, stock portfolios or something like that. So we've got to figure it out, those kind of calculations. There comes the lovely balance sheet when you have to see everything else in numbering here. Everything has to tally up. you got your debits, you got your credits, and everything has to add up. Everything has to balance itself out. There cannot be anything wrong with it. Consumer math that I've dealt with is almost similar to that effect. I have to think of it as an accounting situation because it's a survival situation. In that for, portion, I would agree with my professor back in college that math is in everything. Math is in survival. Math is the numbers that you need to think about, whether or not it's going to be worth it, worth it or not to get this or not get this. You have to keep looking at how much you're spending here compared to how much you're going to be saving if you actually knock out some of that expenditure right there and the same way it goes for businesses as well that's the math i know that's the math i grew up around i didn't grow up looking at things in a mathematically numerical functionality like my professor does and it helps that the younger students 
would appreciate this. I'm looking at the lower end of the stuff. How many years have I survived by counting pennies just to get day by day, get by week by week, get by month by month? Even when I was working at different jobs, earning paycheck per paycheck, weekly or actually bi-weekly, 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 I rarely had something called monthly. If that meant I did, I was on, on salary, but I don't remember that. So I remember the bi-weekly, 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 bi-weekly. And every two weeks, you have to save up enough money to pay for the, the majority stuff. You had to have your expenditures right there, how much you got to spend. And that's got to be automatic because that's the major portions right there. Compared to how much you're bringing in, you start doing adding, subtracting at this point. Now, tally up the totals, how much you're getting. But the paycheck also depends whether or not if it's a steady, steady hourly one. Or is there going to be any kind of fluctuations happening in that paycheck? Uh, maybe it's a part-time situation. So you know hours fluctuate like crazy. If you're full-time and you're still getting 80 hours, or actually 40 hours a week, so it's 80 hours in a paycheck, and you get your amount for that, that hourly and you do the calculations on that. That's the math I'm used to. That was the math I was trained under. That was the math I was educated in the, in the school systems. Because once you got that figured out, then you can figure out the rest of your month. And that's what my mother and I and my, and my brother did. Every month, we calculated saving every receipt we had, giving us a ballpark basis of what we need and once we have our expenditures, then we start doing the balancing act on this damn thing. Now, I don't know about the mathematical geniuses out there, the astro uh, all the astrophysicists out there. I know maybe a couple of them my reputation. One of them impressed the living crap out of me. Actually, a few of them actually did impress the living crap out of me. They wrote books about it, trying to educate the public. But there has to be a certain type of public that can actually understand that kind of higher level thinking. I'm on the lower level. I'm looking at a day by day, cent by cent situation over here. But if I wanted to liven myself up, like, yeah, the satellites are going out there and going to be investigating the universe. Okay, general stuff that the general man, general everyday person would understand. But not about the, but not about the, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Nothing about the equations that are needed to get a satellite up in space, circle it around the planet to get gravi enough of a gravitational thrust to hurl it over to the destination. It'll take years and precise planning. It takes a hell of a lot of higher math than I understand. Calculations, calculus, physics, trigonometry, geometry, algebra. All playing in the in in the whole damn thing. You know what impresses the hell out of me? Truck drivers and divers. Divers use different type of dive tables to calculate how much gases they're going to be breathing in and breathing out, and how much depth level that they're able to absorb and deal with it. I mean, there's a lot to scuba diving that I ever learned about, and I still am scant knowledge on that one. Truck drivers, distance, mileage, gas, time. They got to figure these things out by calculator and by head. Say, for example, you're going to be doing a long haul. Say from Los Angeles all the way to New York City. You got non perishables. They take a little time. But if you got perishables, you got a whole ass. You got to factor in with the rules and regulations they've got of how much time it's going to take to get from one place to another place. You need time for sleeping. You need time for going to the bathroom. You need time to eat. And you also need time to haul ass on the roads. But you also need time to fuel up every so often. you got to do the calculations in your head on this one and on the calculator. And you got to put it into the logbooks of what you've done there during those days. 
That's a lot of calculations. That's a lot of paperwork. I got a minute to these truck drivers. They have to be smart. They have to be. So here we are now. And they do things electronically. The computers will do it automatically. But imagine doing this without the computer's help. You have to do all the calculations yourself when the systems go down. Now they got to start using it. And the Navy, or the Navies out there, or even scuba divers, they have to use mathematics to calculate ratios of gases going down for depth, up and back. How much are going to be staying down there, how much they can breathe, and how much they can tolerate. Or how about airlines? Even airlines have to use math. Fuel consumption, time, distance, whether or not you're going to be getting over to a destination or not. Not to mention wind, fa wind speed factors, temperature gradients helps also play a key form. That's the, that's the thing right there. Math is in every day. It's in our daily usage. It's in our daily processing. It's what we do. Now, my other couple of video, my other videos was talking about consumer math and how I deal with a day-by-day -day struggle and for survival at this point. Because to me, that's important. That's my life. I used to do the bi-weekly stuff. I used to do the uh, jobs all the time. I had to make sure that my money was added into a pool that was going to be used to pay for utilities and rent and food. And if there's anything left over that, that we can use for entertainment or anything else for that matter. Or anything else that we're going to be needing, like emergency funds just to take a dog to the vet. Nails got to be clipped. Hair has got to be washed. Dog gets sick. Ooh. Ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. If you don't have insurance, you're screwed. Unless, of course, you've got a super maxi fund out there that can just oh sure I can pay for this dog's situation no problem these days no it doesn't work that way experience has taught me that one so here we are and that I also have to convey to the professor I have to I gotta convey to him how consumer math motivates me, but not the higher math. I don't care what the hell Pythagoras talked about, or Euripides, or Erastocenes, I think, concerning about the curvature of the Earth. It doesn't equate to me because it has no direct bearing. However, we were talking about bankers. In their situation, that's got a direct bearing. But what about the direct bearing concerning about, oh, maybe a project that'll be uh, lasting for a long while? Such as, well, you work for an aerospace company. How much money do you need for the project? Now you got to do cost control. Now you got to do cost estimates at this point over here. Material, manpower, hours. How many? Uh, what do you got there? in order to get this one particular project going. Same for construction. Same for uh, transportation. Building construction. Aerospace. Naval vessels. They all need mathematics, not to, exactly to design and build and create the object. It's the processing behind the, ter behind the scenes that you got to understand. Management costs, labor cost, not to mention taxes, permits. How much money is that going to be costing at this point over here? Is there going to be any cost overruns? Why is there going to be cost overruns if you already had this estimated? Well, let's see. Uh, more materials that was needed that we didn't even realize at this point over here. More labor that we didn't think about at times. And labor is fluctuating. People get sick. People get injured. People fired. People get laid off. People quit. You need more per personnel. Project gets a little bit longer on that one. More permits are needed because there's bureaucracy involved. Ah, there's the other thing right there, bureaucracy. Politics. 
Now you're talking about everyday math in this situation over here. How much money are you going to be greasing these politicians in order to get your way to get your project going? And is it going to be necessary for this particular politician or for the rest of your area? How big is it? Is it for defense? Is it not for defense? What is it for? Is it for interstate commerce? You have to think about the logistics in this situation over here. You're talking about everyday math. You're talking about everyday logic at this point. We talk about Venn circles. We talk about Venn diagrams. We talk about numbers in these little circles over here and what the hell do they mean. For, for the mathematicians who can figure this stuff out, okay, that's their job. But for the common everyday man who thinks about this stuff, he's not thinking about that. He's thinking about, am I going to be keeping my job? Am I going to be able to support my mother in the hospital? Her bills are climbing up. Ah, medical expenses. Consumer math, maybe, worse, insurance companies. How much of the co-pays and how much of the premiums and how much deductibles are going to be used and already used up? What, what are you going to be responsible for? If you're dealing with an HMO, okay, well, you got certain set parameters. But you got PPO, oof, that's even worse. Because now the math is even worse regarding that one. So there's the other thing I got to deal with. I mean, I can write all these damn suggestions down at this point over here, but man, I'll be pissing off my professor left and right. I wanted to make it nice, clean, and simple. But you know, math is not clean and simple. You think numbers and diagrams are, are basically it, but you got to think about it. Numbers and diagrams are also people. They're people. They're events. They're places. They're things happening. Math is... Math is all around us. You can't just narrow it down for one or two. You gotta narrow it down on everything. What am I looking for? I'm looking for a damn pencil. <laughs> Eraser may work, but sometimes I I do miss a good pencil that works. That eraser may will have to be working for it anyway. So that's the end thing. Give me a second, I gotta write this shit down. <laughs> So I hope you folks are getting this. Math is in our everyday life that we realize it or not. We're constantly influenced by numbers. We're constantly influenced by calculations in our head because we're constantly on survival at this point. One way or another, math affects us a great deal in our everyday life and struggle. And that's what we have to basically understand and deal with. So do I as I write this damn paper in a creative fashion for my math for liberal arts professor who I hope he can understand that not everything is all Greek not everything is physics that everyday math we deal with is just as important as all the higher level math because these days to me that's the only world I live in